Good afternoon. I'm here today with Dr. Esther Lutkins, who's the 2016 Jeffrey Haig awardee. Um, this is one of the ATVB Council's most prestigious awards that goes to a mid-career level investigator and honors the memory of Jeffrey Haig uh, for his contributions in the field of atherosclerosis, both in basic science and, and clinical translational science. Welcome, Esther. Thank you, Catherine. Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your immune checkpoint regulator yeah. uh, story? Okay. Um, so first of all, I'm very honored to receive the award, and I was very surprised that I got it. And my we were not surprised. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're very yeah. deserving. Thank you. So my research is on uh, immune checkpoint regulators and atherosclerosis. And uh, we all know that atherosclerosis is driven both by lipids and the immune system. Um, and back in the past, when I started my PhD, we compared human atherosclerotic plaque of an advanced stage to an early stage, and one of the genes that popped out was CD40 ligand. And since then, this has been my pet molecule, my pet gene, and uh, it turned out to be an immune checkpoint regulator and very important for atherosclerosis. So if you block CD40 ligand or its receptor CD40, you get a huge reduction in atherosclerosis, one of the most potent reducers of atherosclerosis in a laboratory setting. But however, you cannot apply this to uh, humans because otherwise you would suppress the immune system. So my research is aimed at unraveling this CD40 pathway and see if we could inhibit something downstream or cell type specific in order to keep the immune system intact and block cardiovascular disease, particularly atherosclerosis. Well, that's fascinating. So what have been the most recent advances to your work? Are there, are there new advances that might allow clinical translation? Uh, yes, we have found that if you block CD40 and its immediate signaling intermediate TREF6, and that's particularly true for the macrophage. If we block that with a small molecule inhibitor, we get a reduction in atherosclerosis, but we do not affect the immune system. So it's a very powerful drug. We first have shown it in a genetic mutant mouse, by which we blocked the CD40 to F6 interaction, and with our inhibitor, we get exactly the same result. So it's quite spectacular. So we're now trying to uh, push this forward, and hopefully it will open a clinical trial one yeah, day. That's wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Um, so what was it like trying to screen for, for the small molecules? Most of your research in the past that I knew about had been more basic uh, mouse animal model work, and, and then you moved into this new area. It uh, was really tough. It was a first for me as well, because uh, normally we stop at the mouse, and when we have a great phenotype, we unravel this phenotype and then uh, we write it up. But now uh, we really put the years of research into finding a good molecule. So we started off with about 2,000 potential candidates. And then we did elaborate screenings. We ended up with seven candidates that went into the mouse. And then we took the most two powerful candidates and we now did a lot of mouse studies. We put it into HDL nanoparticles uh, to get it more specifically into the macrophage. And in a few weeks from now, we will screen the first uh, non-human primates. So oh, we really that's advancing. so exciting. <laughs> so, yeah. um, it's nice to see you take the story from basic uh, to more translational and, and future clinical applications. Because you're also uh, an MD. Yes, not many people know that. But I'm actually <laughs> trained as an MD. But I like uh, science so much, and especially basic science that I decided at one time to fully dedicate my career to basic science. So I, I'm actually a half pathologist, so mm -hmm. I did my pathology training for about three years, and then I decided to stop and really focus on setting up a lab and uh, being involved in uh, basic science, because uh, I really like that. So who were your early uh, mentors in research? Who were the people that influenced your career choices? So the person that influenced my career the most is uh, Professor Matt Damon. Um, he's now also in Amsterdam, just like me. And when I was a medical student, I walked into his office and told him, hey, I think I want to become a pathologist. And then he said, well, you cannot know that you want to become a pathologist. 
maybe you should do some lab work. And that's, uh, I was 18 years old then, and then I started at the lab. And uh, we have been good friends since, and he always has monitored my career. And uh, we still talk a lot. And although we don't do a lot of research together now, uh, because we, all, we both went our own paths and our own ways, we still have a lot of contact. And, uh, He's still my go-to person when something went wrong or when I screwed <laughs> up something. So. Well, it's so yeah. important to have those um, fabulous mentors at the early career stage. Yeah. Um, you're very lucky. Yeah, yeah, I'm very lucky uh, to have met. And another person is Christian Weber, who came in later into my life. Um, and uh, I also uh, been part of his lab for now about eight years, and he's also a great mentor. And, uh, also a great scientist. So do you have any advice for junior investigators that are uh, just starting out? Um, well, the best advice is that you always have to have a good feeling of what you're doing. You must really like your job, you must love your job, and you must find a great mentor. And that can be your supervisor, but it can also be another person, just someone who fits your needs and someone with who you like best and who can really bring you forward and teach you things. So it's uh, quite important, I think. That's wonderful. Well, you're a tremendous inspiration to all of the young scientists. And it's really nice to see you get this um, honor. Yeah, I'm really honored and really happy. So. Well, thank you.